Metals are good conductors of electricity due to available free electrons in it as shown here. Place the copper metal between two terminals of electric circuit. Cu ions have free electrons and align in direction of current. These electrons conduct the electricity and bulb glows. Let us explain conductor and insulator with help of activity. Place the zinc metal between two terminals of electric circuit. The bulb glows. Place the silver metal between two terminals of electric circuit. The bulb glows. This type of material is called conductor. In case of polythene, sulfur and bromine solution placed between two terminals of electric circuit, bulb does not glow. These type of material are called insulator. Take a torch bulb and join the free end of tester with wire. Another free end of bulb joins with other end of battery and other end of battery joins with tester. This completes the circuit of the tester and the bulb should glow. If the bulb does not glow, it means that the tester is not working. Can you think of the possible reasons? It is possible that the connections are loose or the bulb is fused or your cells are used up. Check that all the connections are tight. From this activity we conclude that tester is conductor of electricity. Take some amount of water in beaker and squeeze the lemon in it. Make an electric circuit as shown here. Immerse the free end of wires in it and observe. The bulb glows. From this activity we conclude that liquid conducts electricity. Take the tray from inside a discarded matchbox. Wrap an electric wire a few times around the tray. Place a small compass needle inside it. Now connect one free end of the wire to the terminal of the battery. Leave the other end free. Take another piece of wire and connect it to the other terminal of the battery. Join the free ends of two wires momentarily. The compass needle gets deflected. Now place the tester on two free ends of the wire. You will observe that the compass needle is deflected by tester. Now place lemon solution between the free ends of two wires momentarily and compass needle also is deflected by lemon. From this activity, we conclude that there is magnetic effect due to current. Take a beaker containing tap water and set up an apparatus as shown here. When current is applied, water dissociates into hydrogen ion and hydronium ion. These ions are free to move and conduct the electricity, thus bulb glows. Similar experiment is performed with distilled water. You will observe that distilled water does not conduct electricity due to any free ions. Take some distilled water in a beaker and make an electric circuit as shown here. Switch the bulb on. The bulb does not glow. Now dissolve a pinch of common salt in distilled water. Again test it. What do you observe this time? You will find that bulb glows due to the free ions in the solution. Take three beakers containing distilled water and label them as A, B and C. Add a pinch of sugar in beaker A. Now add salt in beaker B. And in beaker C add some sodium hydroxide. Test which solution conducts electricity and which does not. You will observe that salt and sodium hydroxide conduct the electricity and bulb glows in both the solutions. Sugar solution does not conduct electricity and bulb does not glow. From this activity, we conclude 
that only that solution conducts electricity which furnishes ions on passing current. Take a lemon. Roll it to soften the skin but be careful not to break it. Insert the safety pin and the board pin into the fruit about 5 cm apart. These should not go through the button skin of the fruit. Twist the wires around safety pin and board clip. Now connect the open ends of wires around the switch and bulb. Put on switch. The bulb close. Let us do an activity about conduction of electricity in strong and weak acids. Set up electric circuit as shown here. When current is applied in HCl, the bulb glows due to the availability of more ions per unit volume. But in case of acetic acid, bulb glows with low intensity because low furnish of ions per unit volume. Water is a bad conductor of electric current. When some impurities like sodium chloride are poured in it, sodium chloride dissociates into sodium ions and chloride ions. When we switch on the bulb now, we will notice that the bulb glows. This indicates that in liquids, conduction of electricity occurs by ions. Take the solution of sodium chloride in a beaker. Insert the electrodes into a solution of these salts one by one. Make the circuit as shown here. Switch on and observe. You will observe that current is passed through the solution and the bulb attached in the circuit glows. This is because sodium chloride breaks down into sodium and chloride ions in the solution. These ions conduct electricity through the solution. Do liquids conduct electricity? Let us do an activity. Take beaker containing silver nitrate in it. Immerse two electrodes, that is copper and silver plate, and make electrical circuit as shown here. When current is applied, Silver nitrate furnishes into silver plus ion and nitrate negative ions. Silver ions move towards the copper plate while copper plate loses electrons. These electrons go to solution and conduct the electricity. It is called good conducting solution that is electrolyte. Take the tray from inside a discarded matchbox. Wrap an electric wire a few times around the tray. Place a small compass needle inside it. Now, connect one free end of the wire to the terminal of a battery. Leave the other end free. Take another piece of wire and connect it to the other terminal of the battery. Insert free end of wires into half cut of potato and observe. You will observe that a compass needle gets deflected and also find that it was always the wire connected to the positive terminal which has greenish blue spot around it. They felt that the discovery was very useful because it could be used for identifying the positive terminal of a cell or a battery concealed in a box. Here we will discuss the electrolysis of copper sulphate. First, put copper sulphate in a beaker. Then, attach an electric circuit in it. Due to electrolysis, the electrolyte dissociates into copper and sulphate ions and the following reaction occurs at different electrodes. At cathode, copper sulphate gains two electrons and converts to solid copper. At anode, the copper metal loses electrons and becomes copper ions that go into the solution. Then they move to the cathode and get deposited there. Take 250 milliliter of distilled water in a clean and dry beaker. Dissolve. 2 teaspoonfuls of copper sulphate in it. Add a few drops of dilute sulfuric acid to copper sulphate solution to make it more conducting. Clean copper plates with sandpaper. 
Now, rinse them with water and dry them. Connect the copper plates to the terminals of the battery and immerse them in copper sulphate solution as shown here. When electric current is passed through the copper sulphate solution, copper sulphate dissociates into copper and sulphate. The free copper gets deposited on its cathode and the plate of cathode increases. The electrolysis or electro decomposition of water. Take a plastic mug, drill two holes at its bottom and fit two graphite rods with cork. Connect these electrodes by connecting wire through battery. Put acidified water so that graphite electrodes are covered. Take two test tubes and fill them with water and invert them on each electrode. Now switch on the current. After some time, oxygen and hydrogen gas are collected by displacing water in the test tube. Here you observe that the volume of gas collected in boiling tube marked A is twice the volume of the gas collected in the boiling tube marked B. When burning stick placed on test tube having hydrogen gas burns with popping sound and while tube which has oxygen gas helps in burning without explosion. Take a solution of silver nitrate in beaker. Dip copper and silver plate in it. Copper is connected to the negative terminal of the battery and it acts as cathode. Silver is connected with the positive terminal of the battery to act as anode and complete the circuit. When the circuit is switched on, silver ions move towards the copper plate and deposit on it and solution becomes fade. This activity shows that deposits of metals can be seen on the electrodes. This is most general method for refining of metals and based upon phenomena of electrolysis. Anode is made of impure copper metal and cathode is made of pure copper and copper sulphate solutions acts as electrolyte. On passing current metal ions from electrolyte are deposited at cathode in the form of pure metal and equivalent amount of metal dissolves from anode into the electrolyte in the form of metal ions. The impurities fall down below the anode and called anode mud. Extraction of aluminium from alumina which contains Al3 positive ions. During electrolysis, these ions move towards the cathode and settle down at the bottom forming a layer. This aluminium in molten form is taken out from an outlet pipe located at the bottom of the electrolytic cell. 